From jail to judge, Judge Greg Mathis grew up on the streets of Detroit, eventually going to jail, but now he's known for his no-nonsense approach in the courtroom as he helps people navigate difficult circumstances. Well, you can watch him each weekday here on KCAL. We recently were able to have Java with Jamie at Three Sisters Coffee and Tea in Burbank. You love the name Three Sisters? I love the name. And Why? I, and because I love sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Greg Mathis says women are often his biggest fans as we head into the Burbank coffee shop. What do you usually drink? Um, well, I need some tea. They, they wear me out on the bench. If you're going to pimp, pimp, all this soft con, begging, that ain't nothing. Your claim is dismissed. Yours is granted for perjury. Have a good day. That voice is often direct with those who enter his TV courtroom. But he's also pretty funny. But you never told me it was a lean no, on it. Do you bet don't step over you there. Come you better leave him alone. Oh, no, he good. He's you see, I'm, I'm telling you, why that. This is the you first order. time you heard me not mess with anybody. He can out talk me. You do provide a lot of laughs. Yeah. Do you think humor is important? in such a serious subject matter? Absolutely. Who, you know, um, you're already there nervous when you're in court, and so to lighten up the mood, um, have a little fun. At the litigants' expense, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but I always tell them I'm just having fun, which <laughs> I kind of preface it with that, particularly in these day and age when you shouldn't offend people by the things you say. This court is now in session. But when the show first started, Judge Mathis had tried to take the show a different direction. What do you do on Monday? Let me wait. say this to you. Wait. Were it not for him paying this $20, you wouldn't win today. You wouldn't win. I read somewhere that you initially looked at Judge Judy as your example of what you wanted to be. Oh, you got a, your Honor. I can't. <laughs> Is there something wrong with you? And then you did not go that route. Well, I tried and it didn't work. And so, they, you know how they do the focus study groups the first year, the studio, and it came back and it says, uh, these folks say they like it when you're funny, but they don't like it when you're mean. I said, well, Judge Judy is mean all the time. Well, you're not Judge Judy. And so uh, I went to be myself. Becoming himself has been a long journey that started on the streets of Detroit. And you have inspired a lot of people, both in your courtroom and outside your courtroom. Because when you were a little kid, you didn't think you were going to grow up to be a judge. Yeah, well, I was a troubled youth, in fact. I uh, grew up in the toughest housing projects in Detroit. Four brothers, single mother who passed when I was a teenager, didn't know my dad. And so it was a struggle, and uh, the environment got me caught up. But the good news is um, it was an education that helped me overcome those obstacles. And that's why I'm such an avid supporter of education, because despite what you might go through in your neighborhood that might be impoverished, crime and drug infested, if you get that quality education, you can leave that and then come back and help. I, I don't say just leave the hood. I say leave the hood, then come back and help the hood after you've empowered yourself. That's why Judge Mathis opened the Mathis Community Center in Detroit. He helps thousands of young people through his nonprofit, young adults asserting themselves. There are so many people who could have gone so many different directions. What was it for you specifically where you said, I need to be better? Well, it was my mother. Uh, I was quite frankly um, pretty much a dying uh, promise, a promise to a dying mother. Uh, I was incarcerated at the time at age 17 and she came and said to me while I was behind bars, it's touching here 40 years later. But the fact is, she said, you've embarrassed me all your life in school, you've embarrassed me all your life in the neighborhood, you've embarrassed me all your life at the church. And she said, just left the doctor and now I'm gonna die. And she said, would you please turn your life around before I die? And the good news is I got a GED very quickly, got admitted to uh, an, an uh, Eastern Michigan University on an affirmative action program, which I'm a supporter of. And so that's what changed my life is that moment.
And while the trajectory of his life changed, his roots are still on full display underneath that black robe. And I'm Detroit Fly all the time, every day, all day. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you've moved to or where you've gone. You know, my friends and family, they always say, you're just like you were when you were a kid, your personality, your whatever it is. You get angry easy, you this and that and the other. And I have to admit, I'm just like I was all my life except for being a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Mathis credits his background in being able to talk to anybody who comes into his courtroom. The more I hear people come to me and say, you changed my life, the things, you, your journey has changed my life, the things you say has changed my life, and mothers tell me you've changed my life, sons. I'm doing what your mother did for you to my sons. And the more that happens, the more I know I gotta keep it going. All right. This series, Judge Mathis, premiered back in 1999. Now called Mathis Court, makes him the longest running black male television host and second longest reigning arbitrator in courtroom TV history. So how long do you plan to keep it going? Till the wheels drop off, <laughs> no, until everybody's out of the street, until, all, until there's no more troubled youth and there's no more single mothers dealing with I think them. it might be taking a while. <laughs> Judge Mathis started his career in social justice and politics. 15 years after serving jail time, he became the youngest judge in Michigan. I always tell folks you serve. That's how you accomplish goals in public life. Mathis feels he's still serving in his courtroom by highlighting basic humanity. As diversity allows you to get to know each other so you can love each other and not fear each other. Inclusion means that just that, include all society and then all communities in the upliftment of our country. So Judge Mathis, wow. I know he's amazing. Judge Mathis also credits his wife for getting him and furthering him. It, when they were in college together, she said, you better get your act. I'm not dating you till you get your act together. Well, he did uh, even further than he had in uh, get, after getting his GED. They've now been married for 38 years. They have four children, one grandchild, and a fun little fact, his son, Greg Mathis Jr., is now a bailiff on the show. Wow, that's just incredible. And it, you know, it says a lot that the law school he went to gave him a second chance, the university gave him a second chance, and he ran with it and really took the opportunity. I think that just proves, you know, we all deserve second chances. Yeah. And so to see what he's been able to do with it is pretty remarkable. That's amazing. And, and the words from his mom are just, chilling but it worked it worked all right really interesting story the